black ink pen. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. This, is, this will be a pencil. Pencil. But for class, so we can see it, black ink pens. I'm super excited about this. Okay, so mm -hmm. registration marks equal distance top and bottom. Let Let's me line this up. Got it. Right? And then you'll make another one down here. And then you'll repeat that all the way up your flat. So we'll take this up and we'll lay it down on the next registration mark. And it keeps everything square. So would you lay out all your registration marks before you start? Okay, yes. Lay out all your registration marks lightly first. It just helps keep you online. So there's none in there. Okay. Do you want No, part of my coffee. Oh. So, land color bricks. Oh. Mm -hmm. You want to be very careful when using the stencils because you want to use it over the majority of the flat. So, as you pull it up, what I suggest is about every other time, lay it on the ground, take just a regular sponge that's just damp, not wet, and just wipe it down. Wipe off all the excess paint that has accumulated Especially on, the other on side. both sides. Because, see, see this? Can everyone see the stuff that's accumulating? Yeah. I've only done one pass with this stencil. So after two or three, it's going to puddle and pool and leave little floppy marks. So always, after a couple of stencils with it, wipe it off, let it air dry for a couple minutes, and then go on and finish up. This will also help it It'll help extend the life of your stencil because the stencil won't soak up that paint. So you'll continue on and you do all your bricks. And you have an entire wall that looks like this. Pretty much. This last third of the flat. So now another very dependent on the source. <coughs> Depending on how aged your bricks are, what color the bricks are, you will now want to go ahead and you've spattered the mortar underneath. So now you're going to spatter the bricks themselves. I'm just going to use a little bit of my, my same dirty wash that I used here, but I'm going to add some of the brick color itself so it's actually a darker version of the base. Sometimes I do a single one, sometimes I do a version of the highlight as a spatter color. It all depends on the sample that you work with. So this one I'm just going to do one. And I'm going to do a finer. This is one you want to be a little more particular about. You don't want a huge fluctuation of, of sizes because you want it to look specific to your brick. Now, remember I said that the more variance you have in your mortar color underneath, the more it will come out. If you look at where we are now, you can see a fluctuation in color in the bricks already, and that's from the mortar base. That's not from what we're doing now. So, again, when you lay in that first mortar, if you are to a couple shades more variation than you think, that's probably right where you need to be. Right? So, don't. You should be just a little scared that you have too much variation in the mortar. A lot of painting is about being scared. Yeah. <laughs> because it works out better in the end. It's more interesting. Okay. I've kind of gone to the extreme end of blazing. Um, this is a combination of yellow ochre and a little bit of leather lake. And then this other one is a much, much darker one. Um, which is actually going to be a shadow color. I'm going to save it for shadow. I'm going to use a version. I'm going to add a little blue to this. This is now becoming my glaze. Okay. 
it's like coming? cooking. It's like cooking. You have all the ingredients you in front of you. You gotta feel it. The dollar. <laughs> This, oh lord. Cook for 30 minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you caught that, that right? <laughs> oh, that's a YouTube <laughs> Now glazing is also something that is very specific to your source. So some bricks have very little glazing. Other bricks have a lot of variation in the indi individual brick, and what that's what glazing is in this case. It's variations within the individual bricks. You want to use your bigger lining brushes for this because they tend to put the glaze on smoothly, and that's one of the big keys to it. Now this looks kind of like an odd color. We'll see what this does. So. Now, when you look at a brick wall, you will notice that things aren't glazed evenly. Like, it won't be all of this. There'll be one here, one here. I'm going to have one. I'm going to have a set of three here. And ideally, you pull off. You don't. You want to avoid this thing that I'm doing, which is leaving a big wallop of paint on it. Yes, it looks like there's too much. You can go over the glaze just water and it will pull some of it off. You don't want to disturb the underpainting. So you don't want to work over the top of these things. And you want one of your lining brushes that's almost exactly the same size as the brick or a little larger. What I have is a little bit small for what I'm doing. So that's my light. Oftentimes if the bricks have a light glaze, they're also somewhere on a dark glaze. Representing this guy. I like this product. Glad one of us does. What was that? What? <laughs> oh. I like this. I think this is going to be a good project. I like it. Of course, dinner responsible. I'm glad one of us does. How can you? This is so much easier than the wood. <laughs> um, yes and no. Thank you. Say, uh, Thank you. Thank you. It just moved. Now this is okay, the dark. don't just tell it looks I again, make everything say, look That's true. That's true. You're right. This is definitely harder for me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. What is the hard thing? This part isn't harder. It's the highlight and shadow that become a little bit more <laughs> difficult. Because you really have to know exactly what the mortar is doing. And if you flip to the third page of that thing, someone grab that, flip to the third page. So this has blue in it? This, this has a little bit of blue, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, a little bit of the original base red. Oh. And it's not as More intense dangerous. as the light oh, yeah. colored one that I did earlier. <laughs> and you always want to leave a few of them natural. Right? So there's all these different types of mortars. So again, it's very, very source specific to what you're doing. So what's next on my list there, Katie? So make sure I go in order of my own list. So we've done mortar, we've done brick, we've aged our brick, we've glazed our brick, and now you must wait for the glaze to dry. Luckily glazes are very thin, so they should dry very quickly.